Hello and welcome to Millennium News Hour. I am Tanziba Naurin. In today's bulletin, we will present top and trending news from across the nation and the world. Let's begin with the headlines of the day. Florida Governor Ron DeSantis launches 2024 GOP presidential campaign to challenge Trump. McCarthy sends Republican debt limit negotiators to White House, but sides are far apart. U.S. announces $524 million for Horn of Africa drought climate crisis, while Germany, U.K. also make pledges. Texas sues Biden administration over asylum rules, saying phone app encourages illegal immigration. Haley commits to federal abortion ban but says it's unlikely without more Republicans in Congress. U.S. aircraft carrier arrives in NATO member Norway to take part in drills. Half of U.S. public approves of Washington's arms deliveries to Ukraine in second year of Russia's war. Typhoon Mauer flips cars, cuts power on Guam as a scope of damage emerges in U.S. Pacific territory. Rapper Fetty Wap sentenced to six years in prison for drug trafficking scheme. China defense ban on U.S. chipmaker Micron accuses Washington of economic coercion. Turkish anti-migrant party backs Erdogan's rival in presidential runoff. Head of Russian private army Wagner says more than 20,000 of his troops died in Bakhmut battle. Czech government approves 2.7 billion plan to acquire 246 armored vehicles from Sweden. Greece appoints judge as caretaker PM ahead of new elections. Real Madrid players wear Vinicius Jr.'s jersey before a Spanish league game. And El Salvador soccer club whose supporters set off deadly stampede will play without fans for a year. You are listening to headlines, now news in detail. Florida Governor Ron DeSantis entered the 2024 presidential race on Wednesday, stepping into a crowded Republican primary contest that will test both his national appeal as a cultural conservative firebrand and the GOP's willingness to move on from former President Donald Trump. The 44-year-old Republican revealed his decision in a Federal Election Commission filing before an online conversation with Twitter CEO Elon Musk. It marks a new chapter in his extraordinary rise from little-known congressman to two-term governor to a leading figure in the nation's bitter fights over race, gender, abortion, and other divisive issues. DeSantis is considered to be Trump's strongest Republican rival even as the governor faces questions about his readiness for the national stage. DeSantis' audio-only announcement was to be streamed on Twitter spaces beginning at 6 p.m. He was following up with primetime appearances on conservative programs, including Fox News and Mark Levin's radio show. DeSantis' entry into the Republican field has been rumored for months and he is considered one of the party's strongest candidates in the quest to retake the White House from Democratic President Joe Biden. The 80-year-old incumbent Republicans say has pushed the nation too far left while failing to address inflation, immigration, and crime. 
the Republican nominee will face Biden on the general election ballot in November 2024. House Speaker Kevin McCarthy said Wednesday he was sending Republican negotiators to the White House to finish out debt limit talks, but warned that the two sides are still far apart as they try to reach a budget deal with President Joe Biden. McCarthy said he remained optimistic they could make progress in hopes of an agreement before a deadline as soon as next week, when the Treasury Department could run out of cash to pay its bills. We are not going to default, said McCarthy, representative of California. Defiant, the speaker said, it's not my fault that Washington was careening toward a crisis, pushing blame onto the White House for Biden's refusal to negotiate earlier as Republicans acted to slash spending. I am hoping we can make progress, McCarthy said. I am not going to give up. Debt ceiling negotiations are locked on a classic problem that has vexed, divided and disrupted Washington before. Republicans led by McCarthy want to roll back federal government spending while Biden and other Democrats do not. The United States announced at a UN conference on Wednesday nearly 524 million in additional humanitarian aid for the Horn of Africa that aims to put a spotlight on the extreme effects of climate change and the worst drought in the region in 40 years and the need for more than 5 billion. Near the start of the conference, Germany announced a pledge of 210 million euros and the United Kingdom pledged 119 million for Somalia, Ethiopia, and Kenya. The UN has appealed for 7 billion and has received just 1.6 billion, far from enough to help the 43.3 million people in need of assistance in the Three Horn of Africa countries or even just the 21 million among them who don't have access to enough food. UN Secretary General Antonio Guterres told would be donors at the conference to make an immediate and major injection of funding to prevent the crisis caused by drought, mass displacement after years of conflict, and skyrocketing food prices from turning into catastrophe. The state of Texas is suing the Biden administration in an attempt to have a newly introduced asylum rule thrown out, saying a phone app used by migrants to set up appointments at the border to seek entry into the United States is encouraging illegal immigration. The lawsuit filed to his day is the latest legal salvo attacking various aspects of the administration's plan to manage migration in the aftermath of the end of a key pandemic era immigration regulation called Title 42. In the lawsuit, Texas argues that the asylum rule encourages the use of a cell phone app called CBP-1 for migrants who don't have proper documentation to make an appointment to come to a port of entry and seek entry into the United States. Texas argues the Biden administration is essentially encouraging people to come to the U.S. even though they don't have legal basis to stay. The complaint was filed in the Western District of Texas. In a statement to Wednesday, the Department of Homeland Security said Texas lawsuit would actually create disorder, not alleviate it, and that the app was part of measures that have helped reduce unlawful immigration by more than 70% since Title 42 ended. Republican presidential candidate Nikki Haley on Wednesday pledged to sign a federal ban on abortion but noted that passing one would be highly unlikely without more Republicans in Congress, although Haley didn't say how many weeks a federal ban should encompass. Her commitment to signing one is the most specific she has been on the issue during her presidential campaign. The former South Carolina governor and U.S. ambassador to the United Nations said no one has been honest about how difficult a ban could be to achieve in a closely divided federal government. 
It would take a majority of the House, 60 senators and the president to sign it, Haley said at St. Anselm College in Manchester, New Hampshire, suggesting that even a few GOP pickups in the 2024 elections wouldn't make the difference in passage. She was referring specifically to the supermajority required for major legislation to clear the 100-member Senate. We haven't had 60 Republican senators in 100 years, Haley said. The comments come amid a continuing debate over abortion restrictions among the Republicans seeking their party's presidential nomination. Senator Tim Scott, Haley's fellow South Carolinian who launched his bid this week, has said he would sign a 15-week ban. Other candidates, like former Arkansas Governor Asa Hutchinson, have said the issue should stay in the states without a Republican supermajority in Congress. A U.S. aircraft carrier arrived Wednesday in Oslo, with the Norwegian Armed Forces saying it gives them a unique opportunity to further develop cooperation and work more closely with our most important ally, the United States. The nuclear-powered ship USS Gerald R. Ford entered the Oslo Fjord, escorted by a rapid dinghy type boat with armed personnel on board. The Norwegian Armed Forces has said any boats must stay half kilometer away from the aircraft carrier and a no-fly zone was created over the area where the aircraft carrier was. Described as the largest aircraft carrier in the world, the vessel will stay in the Norwegian capital until Tuesday. It is then expected to take part in drills with the Norwegian Armed Forces reportedly in the Arctic. The ship's first foreign call was broadcast live on Norwegian public television. Onlookers, some using binoculars, were seen on land watching as the large aircraft carrier glided deeper and deeper into the fjord and eventually reached the city of Oslo. Like the blue and yellow flag that popped up around the US when Russia invaded Ukraine 15 months ago, U.S. popular support for Washington's backing of Ukraine has faded a little but remains widespread. A survey by the University of Chicago's Harris School of Public Policy and NORC shows. It found that half of the people in the U.S. support the Pentagon's ongoing supply of weapons to Ukraine for its defense against Russian forces. That level is nearly unchanged in the past year while about a quarter are opposed to sustaining the military lifeline that has now topped $37 billion. Big majorities among both Democrats and Republicans believe Russia's attack on Ukraine was unjustified, according to the poll taken last month, and about three out of four people in the U.S. support the United States playing at least some role in the conflict, the survey found. The findings are in line with what Ukraine's ambassador says she says when she makes appearances at think tanks, fancy dinners, embassy parties, and other events to rally vital U.S. backing for her country. Typhoon Mauer rumbled through Guam as a powerful Category 4 storm, relentlessly lashing the U.S. Pacific Island territory with heavy rain, powerful winds, and a dangerous storm surge and knocking out power to many communities where frightened residents hunkered down for the night in homes and shelters. The typhoon center passed over the northern tip of Guam on Wednesday evening, the National Weather Service said. It is the strongest storm to hit the territory of over 150,000 people in decades. Its maximum sustained winds remained at 140 mph late Wednesday, and it was forecast to intensify throughout the day Thursday, the weather service said. Videos posted on social media showed fallen trees, a flipped pickup truck, solar panels flying through the air, parts of a wall of a multi-story hotel crumbling to the ground and exposing river, and a storm surge and waves crashing through coastal reefs. The early scope of the damage was difficult to ascertain with power and internet failures making communication with the far-flung island difficult to impossible 
as the storm curved an excruciatingly slow path. Rapper Fetty Wap was sentenced to six years in federal prison on Wednesday for his role in a New York-based drug trafficking scheme. The Trap Queen rapper, whose legal name is Willie Maxwell, pleaded guilty in August 2022 to a conspiracy drug charge that carried a mandatory minimum sentence of five years. The sentence was handed down in federal court on Long Island. Maxwell apologized for his actions and told the judge, me being selfish in my pride put me in this position today. His lawyers had suggested he turned to selling drugs because of financial hardship brought on by the COVID-19 pandemic. Maxwell was arrested in October 2021 on charges of participating in a conspiracy to smuggle large amounts of heroin, fentanyl and other drugs into the New York City area. The New Jersey-born rapper and five co-defendants were accused of conspiring to possess and distribute more than 100 kilograms of heroin, fentanyl and crack cocaine between June 2019 and June 2020. Now it's time for global updates. The Chinese government on Wednesday defended its ban on products from U.S. memory chip maker Micron Technology Incorporation in some computer systems after Washington expressed concern, adding to strains over technology and security. The security review of Micron products was conducted in accordance with the law, said a foreign ministry spokesperson, Mao Ning. The Cyberspace Administration of China on Sunday said Micron products have unspecified security risks but gave no details. It banned them from computers that handle sensitive information. That came after Washington, Japan and the Netherlands blocked Chinese access to technology to make advanced processor chips on security grounds at a time when the ruling Communist Party is threatening to attack Taiwan and is more assertive toward its other Asian neighbors. China's cybersecurity review does not target specific countries or regions, Mao said. We do not exclude technologies and products from any country. Companies on both sides have been buffeted by supply disruptions and lost sales revenue. A hard-line anti-migrant party on Wednesday threw its weight behind the opposition candidate who is running against Turkish President Recep Tayyip Erdogan in this weekend's runoff presidential race. Umid Ozdag, the leader of the far-right Victory Party, announced his support for main opposition party leader Kemal Kilic Daruglu, who will be facing off against Erdogan on Sunday. He said he decided to back Kilic Daruglu after the two reached a consensus on the need to repatriate millions of migrants within a year. Kilic Daruglu has stated very clearly that refugees should return to their homeland and that this is the policy he will implement, Ozdak told reporters following several rounds of talks with Kilic Daruglu. Therefore, as the Victory Party, we decided to support Mr. Kilic Daruglu in the second round of the presidential election. Ozdak added that the two agreed on a model that is in line with international laws and upholds human rights. That would ensure the security of Syrians in Syria but lift the heavy burden on Turkey's economy and that would make our streets safe again. Ozdak's announcement came just days after Sinan Ogan, the third-placed contender in the first round of the presidential election on May 14, endorsed Erdogan in the upcoming runoff. Ogan was the joint candidate of an alliance of small conservative parties led by Ozdag's Victory Party. The head of the Russian private army Wagner has again broken with the Kremlin line on Ukraine saying its goal of demilitarizing the country has backfired, acknowledging Russian troops have killed civilians and agreeing with Western estimates that he has lost more than 20,000 men in the battle for Bakhmut. Yevgeny Prigozhin said about half of those who died 
in the eastern Ukrainian city where Russian convicts recruited for the 15-month-old war. His figures stood in stark contrast to Moscow's widely disputed claims that just over 6,000 of its troops were killed throughout the war as of January. By comparison, official Soviet troop losses in the 1979-89 to Afghanistan war were 15,000. Ukraine hasn't said how many of its soldiers have died since Russia's full-scale invasion began in February 2022. White House officials said Wednesday that Prigozhin's comments were in line with their own estimates that Russian losses have accelerated. The White House estimated this month that Russian forces had suffered 100,000 casualties, including 20,000 killed in fighting since December. White House National Security Council spokesman John Kirby said then that about half of those killed were Wagner forces. Analysts believe many of those killed in the nine-month fight for Bakhmut were Russian convicts with little military training. The Czech government approved a defense ministry plan on Wednesday to acquire 246 CV-90 armored combat vehicles as part of a massive modernization of the military amid the Russian war against Ukraine. Defense Minister Jana Sernikova said the deal to get the infantry fighting vehicles made by Sweden's BAE Systems Haglund's AB is owed 59.7 billion Czech crowns. The ministry signed the deal with the Swedish side on Wednesday. Sernikova said the first CV-90s should be delivered in 2026 and all of them by 2030. In a statement, Sweden's Defence Minister Pal Johnson said he was convinced that Combat Vehicle 90 is the right choice for the Czech Republic. According to the website of BAE Systems Haglunds, there are currently 15 variants of the CV-90 in service in seven countries – Denmark, Estonia, Finland, Norway, Sweden, Switzerland and the Netherlands. Senior Judge Yonis Sermos was named caretaker Prime Minister in Greece Wednesday after a general election failed to produce a new government. Sermos, who is 66 years old, will be sworn in Thursday and lead a caretaker government until a new election next month, according to government officials. The vote is widely expected to be held on June 25, but has not been formally confirmed. His appointment was announced after the conservative New Democracy Party of Prime Minister Kyriakos Mitsotakis won a landslide victory in a general election Sunday, beating his left-wing opponents by 20 percentage points, but falling short of a parliamentary majority. Next month's election will take place under a different system which boosts the winning party. Mitsotakis and the leaders of four other political parties represented in parliament held a joint meeting Wednesday with President Katerina Sekularopoulou to discuss arrangements for the upcoming election. Now it's time for business news. Today's New York stock close price is 15,022.89. The NYSE composite is decreased by 149.38 points or 0.98%. Tokyo stock close price is 30,682.68. The Nikkei 225 index is decreased by 275.09 points or 0.89%. Shanghai stock close price is 3,204.7494. The Shanghai index is decreased by 41.49 points or 1.28%. Hong Kong stock close price is 19,115.93. The Hang Seng index is decreased by 315.32 points or 1.62%. 
Bombay stock close price is 61,773.78. The census index is decreased by 208.01 points or 0.34%. Let's have a look on today's sports stories. Vinicius Jr. was not on the field, but his Real Madrid teammates all came out wearing his number 20 jersey in support of the Brazil forward ahead of the game against Rayo Vallecano in the Spanish league on Wednesday. Vinicius came out briefly to salute the fans as Madrid players including those not in the squad for the game, lined up with their backs to the stands showing Vinicius' jersey. Vinicius watched the match alongside club president Florentino Perez. In the 20th minute, fans applauded and chanted his name, many standing. The Brazilian stood up and saluted back from the VIP section. Outside the Santiago Bernabeu Stadium, many fans arrived displaying messages condemning racism and praising Vinicius. Inside, a huge banner was displayed behind one of the goals with the words, We are all Vinicius, in all. As part of a new anti-racism campaign by the Spanish League, the Spanish Soccer Federation and the government, a banner with the words, Braces out of football, was held by players from both squad before the match. Players from both teams wear armbands with anti-racism messages. Slogans against racism were shown during the national and international broadcast of the game. The El Salvador Soccer Club, whose fans pushed down an entrance gate, setting off a stampede that left 12 people dead last weekend, will play without supporters in its stadium for a year, the country's soccer federation said. Club Alianza also will have to pay a $30,000 fine. The Salvadoran Soccer Federation's disciplinary committee decided late Monday night. Authorities said hundreds of fans were enraged when they weren't allowed to enter the stadium despite having tickets. They pushed until they knocked down an entrance gate and people were crushed and suffocated under the pressure. The game was still in the first period Saturday night when players on the field began looking toward the stands. Unconscious fans were being carried out of an entrance tunnel and onto the field where others tried frantically to revive them. Investigators are trying to determine why the gate was closed when hundreds of ticket-holding fans remained outside. The section where the stampede occurred had been designated exclusively for fans of Leonza. Let's have a look on today's weather forecast.
That's all in today's news. Keep watching Millennium News 24 for latest update. Millennium TV US and Millennium News 24 network is transmitted and available to be watched free for all live TV such as Sony, Samsung, LG, Roku TV, Amazon TV and Apple TV. And also in all European countries and Australia, available with Sky Network, Worldwide Jago TV, Radiant IPTV, Worldwide Jago BD Network and Horizon Satellite globally. Stay connected with us for all types of informative and entertainment programs. Thank you.